Chapter 1 The Teacher Since teaching is considered a vocation and not a profession, teachers become the person into whose hands Christ has entrusted a number of children. The task of teaching is an apostolic activity, which ought to be considered the practice of theological virtues. Teaching pertains to charismatic order and requires extraordinary qualities of mind and heart, extremely careful preparation, and a constant readiness to begin and to adapt. Teachers are the catalyst in which today's children become tomorrow's leaders, and the vocation of teaching should be taken very seriously. A zealous teacher does not limit himself or herself to instructing his or her students. He or she works with every means at his or her disposal to lead them home to his or her and their God. A teacher should give a daily effort to perform his or her various duties in excellence whereby he or she can set a good example. That example should encourage students to do good at all times through pure motives, and to desire all that good education supposes. Every teacher is a values education teacher. Teachers need to recognize the reality and possibilities regarding values that may be involved in and affected by the teaching of their particular subjects. Values should be seen as part of a teacher's concern. Otherwise, they will address only the intellectual development of their students and not the formation of the whole person. That is the teacher's moral duty. As a starting point, every teacher needs to reflect on the nature of his or her subject matter and its unique contribution as a body of knowledge. Based on this, he or she can then develop the concepts and skills that will assist students in realizing identified values. A particular subject matter may involve different values that need to be integrated. Teachers teach values by the kind of lives they live. Teacher Self-Evaluation Teachers have many obligations and sometimes find themselves with conflicting pressures and values in their work. They need to enhance their students' learning and skills in many ways that a larger society requires. They are expected to nurture the well-being and welfare of their students and to help them become socially and emotionally mature. Conscientious teachers often find that the demands on their skills and energy exceed their capabilities and strength. To help teachers develop their inner resources that are equal to the challenges they face, the following steps for self-evaluation are offered. 12 Recommended Self-Evaluation Steps Number 1. Emotional stability, sound mental health. A sense of personal worth, self-respect, and emotional security are essential. Ask questions such as, do I value my own personal worth? Do I recognize each child's individual personal growth? Do I treat my students with respect, politeness, understanding, and patience? Do I teach reliability and cooperation? Do I have a sense of humor? Number two, physical health dynamic personality. Good teachers are fit, work at preventing illness, and take good care of their bodies in order to teach at optimal levels. Students need their teachers to be well and enthusiastic in the classroom. Ask questions such as, do I have energy? Do I eat sensibly? Do I exercise regularly? Is my appearance clean and attractive? Am I enthusiastic in the classroom? Do I motivate my students to want to learn? Number three, good use of intelligence and good teaching ability. Good teachers make effective use of their intelligence and are sensitive to the needs of others. They grasp and understand subject knowledge and are patient with and can recognize slower minds and can re-explain different or innovative solutions. Ask questions such as, Do I know what to expect from different students? Am I careful to avoid registering my annoyance or frustration by word or gesture? Can I develop remedial programs for slow learners? Can I effectively deal with behavior problems? Number four, 
creativity, imagination, and resourcefulness. Good teachers are well-informed and are constantly researching new educational materials. They seek for and sift through new ideas and apply effective ones. They assess teaching effectiveness by testing students regularly, reviewing and reteaching if necessary. Ask questions such as, do I set goals and objectives in lessons? Do I have a vision of what individual students can accomplish? Can I invent new ways of illustrating concepts? Have I tried more than one approach when a student is confused? Am I constantly obtaining fresh material from both likely and unlikely resources? Do I display ingenuity in obtaining pertinent materials? Can I set up room displays, establish classroom rules, and regularly conduct class discussions? Number five, courtesy, kindness, sympathy, and tact. Courtesy promotes understanding and empathy. Kindness sweetens communication and tact indicates knowledge of problem solving. Asked questions such as, is my courtesy or lack of courtesy reflected in my students' behavior? Do I have rapport with my students and do they trust me? Do students respond with enthusiasm to my teaching? Number six, sincerity and honesty. Trust is built on sincerity and honesty, a desire to help, and keeping of promises. Ask questions such as, Is my reputation one of honesty, and are my expectations realistic? Do students understand what I want for and from them? Do students want to cooperate with one another and with me? Number seven, firmness. Firmness should not be hardened into rigidity but a teacher's presentations should be carefully structured and delivered in a clear manner in order to create a secure learning environment. This calls for setting definite standards for good classroom life and solving any problems that arise at the weekly class discussion. Ask questions such as, Do my students respect me and also feel warmth for and from me? Are my students aware of what I expect of them? Do my students know which decisions are final and best for their safety? Number eight, promptness, efficiency, and organization. Effective teachers do planning and organization well in advance and make orderly plans for both formal and informal discussions. Ask questions such as, do my lessons start and end within allotted times? Are my lessons and day plans organized and prepared ahead of time? Do students sense my organization and respond accordingly? Number nine, positive, encouraging attitude. Being positive will bring out the best in students, thus producing happier students and more productive learning. It also indicates the teacher's ability to concentrate on students' learning styles. Ask questions such as, do I acknowledge good progress? Are my students gently encouraged to do better when they make mistakes? Number 10. Democratic Leadership Although a teacher is a responsible authority in the classroom, he or she uses guidance and directives from principals, specialists, and superintendents. Ask questions such as, Do I communicate well with my students? Are my students entrusted to carry out simple classroom maintenance tasks? Taking into consideration my students' ages and stages of development, do my students share in the decision-making process by proposing ideas, carrying out suggestions, or organizing activities? Number 11. Professional Status Responsible teachers establish friendly relations with colleagues and further their academic training and professional development. Ask questions such as, Do I read educational magazines and other related materials to help me stay informed and educated? Do I attend conferences, conventions, or seminars related to my subject matter? Number 12. The Basic Qualities of a Good Teacher A good teacher is patient, loving, and kind, gives directions clearly, and expects students to listen quietly and attentively, is in line with the four R's, responsibility, resourcefulness, reasonableness, 
and responsiveness and can instill the four R's in students' attitudes and behavior. Ask questions such as, Am I behaving in a responsible manner? Am I resourceful in finding enrichment materials for gifted students? Do I make reasonable requests? Am I responsive verbally or with actions to students' needs? Using these steps, teachers are likely to discover areas of strength they previously had not recognized and can highlight areas that need to be improved. Self-understanding enables teachers to be more effective and confident in the classroom. If a teacher can answer most of those questions in the affirmative, then he or she and his or her students are likely to experience school as a positive place for learning and happily look forward to going to school each day.